Hello everyone, I'm Alex and welcome to the Beercraft channel. As you already gather from the video title, we are going to talk about DM screen. The idea of creating something like this came to me a while ago, after watching a video from Power World Spill channel, where a similar DM screen was made pretty simple. Uh, the link is in description as usual. So if you don't have a laser cutter, you can watch how a similar screen can be made with using some simple tools, but I have one, so we will walk through all the steps of creating it and move on to the final result. We will start with a basic plan. From the blueprint I simply used a portable monitor I had purchased. I won't specify the exact model, because if you want to build something similar you can search on Amazon or some similar platforms for a portable monitor that suit you preferred size and price of course. Looking forward, the most expensive part is the portable monitor for this DM screen. And probably the most important criteria for me here is that monitor should work with just a single USB-C power source. It's not strict limitation, but it's more convenient to have a bit less cables on the table. So once all the basic measurements were ready, I simply sketched out all the blueprint in the Lightburn software. If you own the laser cutter, you're probably familiar with this soft, if not, I highly recommend you to check it out. I also selected some images that I liked and fit to the theme. Here is a tip. If you are not an artist and cannot draw yourself like me, try to look for images on stock photo sites or ask an AI tool to generate something for you. After a few test burns, I find out the optimal settings for the, this specific wood, I settled on the final design and moved on to the most interesting yet challenging stage, the assembly. For the material I use 3mm plywood, I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood it is, it was bought at hardware store and cut into appropriate size squares with the help of my friend. The obvious choice for the wood to glue was of course wood glue. You may have seen this same bottle in previous videos, I bought it ages ago at the local dollar store and once again it came in handy. Initially I used clamps, but since I only have a few of them, I came across an interesting and simple solution – wooden clothespins. They did a great job for holding the pieces together, allowing the glue to bond. These were also from the dollar store and turned out to be very useful for this project. Some mistakes in the initial model and places where I miscalculated the number of needed parts were usually fixed by adjusting the existing piece with a knife and some additional fittings. So be careful and double check your work. But if you do make a mistake, do not get discouraged. There is always room for improvisation or you can simply make extra parts. I also decided to use magnets, at the time it seemed like a great idea and I thought small magnet would work perfectly through a layer or even two of plywood. Well, let me share my experience and skipping ahead a bit, I'll tell you that this did not work exactly as I expected. In some places the magnets worked fine, but in the others um, they lacked the strength to function properly. Once the assembly and gluing were finished, I ended up with three main parts. The section for the screen itself and two side panels that would cover the open part of the screen. Here again I slightly miscalculated and the result did not came out exactly as I had initially planned, but that's the charm of project like that. You can always tweak things a bit, whether it is in the design or in the final product, but I will talk more about that later. After the final fitting was done, I moved on to sanding. This process did not make it into the video, because it was noisy, dusty and to be honest pretty boring. I used a multi-tool, some 
elbow grace and a bit of help from Dremel with various sanding attachments. The tools you use will depend on the type of wood you choose and how carefully you were during the gluing process. I was not particularly careful, so I ended up using different grids for sandpaper. Starting from P60 and finishing with something around P240 and then hand sanding for the final touch. In general, the process is straightforward. You sand until you are satisfied with the result. I decided not completely remove the burn marks from the laser cutting, but rather smooth out the edges to give the future screen a finished look. The almost final, most important and most challenging step would be applying varnish, oil or any other wood finish of your choice. To protect the wood from damage and give it a polished, complete appearance, it need to be treated with some kind of finish. This could be a wood stain, varnish or another type of wood treatment. I am not a specialist here, so I just used what I already had at home. I took several wood stains that I had on hand and did a few test coats on the sample pieces where I had tested the burning power for the engraving. In the end, I chose the color that I thought would suit the project best. Next came the most challenging step, working on the finished parts. Since I had no clue how to properly apply the wood finish, I asked some knowledgeable people and then took the plunge, hoping for the best. Yeah, it is the most challenging and strange part, because you simply can ruin everything with just some wrong move. In short, you carefully apply an even layer of the finish, wipe off the excess with paper towel or cloth and pray you did not overdo it or leave any streaks. Spoiler alert, I left some. The one thing I learned from this project is that when applying a wood finish you need to work very quickly, but carefully at the same time which might be a really challenge. So wood absorbs the finish rapidly. To maintain a consistent result, you need to apply it evenly and carefully. Quickly, precisely, without mistakes, yeah, you get it, right? It was quite difficult. Ah, and one more thing I almost forgot. You need to cover the entire product, or at least the whole section you are working on, in one go. If you let a part of it dry, and then apply another coat layer, the layers might overlap and it will look worse. And yeah, one more thing drips on the corners. Well, they are just the worst. Anyway, I did my best and I'm quite happy with the result, even if it is not perfect. After letting everything dry, I moved on to the final assembly. At this stage, I permanently attached the screen to the main frame, I added some decorative elements to the side door and assembled everything together. As for the decorations and hinges, I also ordered those online. Here you can pick whatever suits your taste and design and budget again. And speaking about budget, depending on yours, you can find fairly inexpensive options in the form of ready-made sets. So, as for the doors, I had hoped that they would open the way they usually do on the most DM screens, bending slightly inward toward the DM. At the same time, I want them to close outward, covering the screen. This would make it easy to store or transport the DM screen if necessary, without worrying about damaging the monitor, which, let me remind, is the most expensive part of our project. It did not turn out exactly as I planned, but I'm quite satisfied with the result, and in just a moment I will be ready to share it with you. In the meantime, I'd like to say a big thank you for watching, Thanks to everyone who helped with this video as well. Your support and motivation mean a lot. Make sure to subscribe the channel if you have not yet. Do not forget to like this video. And now it's time to see the final result.